Hey y'all, welcome to Math with Miss Davis. Today we're going to talk about an introduction to proofs, and we're going to do that by using algebraic proofs. Our goal is to understand the basic setup of a proof, and we're going to do that by using a two-column proof with algebra. So basically we're going to take something that's really familiar to us, which is solving algebraic expressions, and then add something that's not familiar to us, which are proofs. And it's going to come together and it's going to be awesome, because proofs are super fun. So. Let's talk about what a geometric proof is. A proof is basically just a convincing argument that something is true. And it's going to consist of a sequence of statements. So you're going to make a bunch of statements. And each one of those statements has to be supported by a reason. So you can't say anything without justifying what you're saying. It's going to start with a given set of premises. And it's going to lead to a valid conclusion. Recall that this type of reasoning is called deductive reasoning. So let's talk about the four different types of statements you can make that justify. So these reasons, there are four different types of reasons you can supply. If you look down here on our handout, the four types of reasons include definitions, properties, postulates, and theorems. So with algebra, here are some really important properties that we're going to use to prove and justify each step that we take when solving the equation. For instance, the addition property of equality. The addition property of equality says that if a equals b, then a plus c equals b plus c. So that's just saying you can add something to both sides. We know that in algebra, right? That's how we solve things. The subtraction property property of equality is also similar. If a equals b, then a minus c equals b minus c. All that's saying is you can subtract the same thing on both sides and it's still equal to each other. Multi multiplication property of equality again says that if a equals b, then a times c equals b times c. And we know that's true because if you multiply something on one side, you have to multiply it on the other to keep that equation equal. Division property again says that if a equals b, then a divided by c equals b divided by c. Basically, all of these four properties are just talking about whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. And that's why we're able to do it is because they're maintaining equality. So the distributive property, we know this one. If a times b plus c, then a times b plus c equals ab plus ac. So when you distribute something, the property or justification you would give is the distributive property. Next is a substitution property, which says that if a equals b, then a may be replaced by b in any expression or equation. The reflexive property says that for any real number a, a will equal a. A value will always equal itself. The symmetric property says that if a equals b, then you can flip it and say b equals a. Finally, the transitive property says that if a equals b and b equals c, then we can say that a equals c. So when we're using the properties of equality, we use these to justify each step when we're solving an equation. In a two-column proof, a common format that's used to organize a proof, which is a two-column proof, the left side is going to have the statements, which are also called your steps, and then the right side will have your reasons. And we already talked about the four different types of reasons we can use, which are definitions, properties, postulates, and theorems. If a step requires simplification by combining like terms, simply write simplify. That's the justification for that step. So let's look at some examples. Let's say that we're given a divided by negative 6 plus 2 equals 5, and we want to prove A equals negative 18. This is a basic setup of a proof. Here's the given premise, and here's what we're trying to prove. 
Now, when you start a proof, the first thing you're going to do is in the left column, you're going to write what you're given, and your reason is going to be that it was given to you. So we know that the first thing we would do here is subtract the two from both sides. So to get from step one to step two, notice all we did was subtract two from both sides. So that reason is the subtraction property of equality, the subtraction POE. Now we know that to get to solve for A, we would multiply by negative six on both sides. That is the multiplication property. Awesome, let's do another example. So say we're given that negative nine times two X minus three equals 63, and we're supposed to prove that X equals negative two. Again, the first thing you're gonna do is write what you're given, and the reason is gonna be that it was given. We know that when we solve algebra, the first thing we should do is distribute that nine through these parentheses. And that's exactly what we do. So here we're gonna write that we did this with the distributive property. Next, we would know that we would subtract 27 from both sides, so that's gonna be the subtraction property. And finally, we would divide by negative 18, so that's the division property. Awesome. Let's try it now where we're given a little bit less guidance. In other words, the left-hand column won't be filled in for us. So for example, let's say that we're given 3x plus 1 equals negative 14, and we're trying to prove that x equals negative 5. The first thing we should do is write what we're given. 3x plus 1 equals negative 14. And our reason is going to be because it was given to us. Next, we know that to solve this, I would subtract 1 from both sides, which would give me 3x equals negative 15. And to justify that, I'm going to say I use the subtraction property of equality. Finally, we know that we would divide by 3, which would give us x equals negative 5, and that is by the division property. And obviously we don't need to use that fourth column, which is okay. So let's try it again. If we're given that two times X minus nine equals negative 10, let's prove that X equals four. The first thing you do is write what you're given. And our reason is going to be that it was given to us. Now we know that to solve this equation, we would distribute. When I distribute, I'm gonna get two X minus 18 equals negative 10. And I did that by using the distributive property. Now I would add 18 to both sides, which would give me 2x equals eight. And that is by the addition property. Then I would divide by two to get x equals four, and that's by the division property. And our proof is finished because we have proved that x equals four. Awesome. So basically, think about algebraic proofs as you're solving the equation here. You're doing each step that you would normally do to solve the equation. All you're doing is making sure that you're justifying every step that you're taking to do that. You know how to solve algebra, and now all you're having to do is state why you're doing each step. Hopefully, whenever you're doing math, you're already thinking of that, of why it's true, but this is a formal way of proving that what you're doing is actually providing a valid conclusion and a truthful response. So I hope this video was helpful in introducing proofs and then using algebraic proofs. Like and subscribe and go forth and prosper.